listed here on, on, on the screen. And then um, today I'd like to focus mainly uh, and take a lot of time on discussions about the draft proposal where I believe the latest version is the one that's been shared by uh, Michael and then move on to um, spend maybe the last 10 minutes or so on discussing about drafting tool, agree on which tool to use and reconfirm the next steps and schedule. Um, is there anything else that um, people would like to discuss? I haven't actually clearly listed about the, um, the public archives of this uh, Chris our group's mailing list, but this is something that I'd like to discuss as well at the end. So I don't hear from anybody for suggestions, so uh, let's move on to actions review. So the first action is uh, for Herman to create a private closed mailing list for Chris members as soon as possible. This has been done and uh, I'd like to discuss later about whether to make this uh, public archives, uh, read-only archives available. The next action is Herman to update the, gra uh, the draft CRISP timeline. Um, Herman, do you have the status for this? Uh, yes, it will be. I created a table in the uh, CRISP team uh, section of the Enroll website. I will send this to the uh, many list. Um, the table is including a list of uh, meetings that are based on the timeline that was discussed in the last uh, in the last teleconference. Included a call for the December 15th. And in addition to that, um, the table is including uh, notes for each meeting, the web uh, link uh, for each of the coming meetings, and, and also a section about the documents that uh, will be discussed in each of these teleconferences. Uh, it's a list of 10 meetings that are tentative uh, according to the timeline that we discussed in the last teleconference. And I would appreciate if you take a look to the link I was just about to send to the uh, Christine many list. Uh, it's already published. It is in the NRO website, but uh, I think you can consider the action done. Thank you very much, Herman. So let's take a look. And if we're, we all feel comfortable, uh, I think it's also worth uh, sharing with the community that this uh, timeline is available up on the NRO um, website. So uh, let's move on to the next action item, which is for Craig, Andre, Michael, and Esteban, who have volunteered in the last meeting to prepare and share a first draft of the document for the next conference. So what I observed so far is Craig has shared a PDF of comparison of the RIA proposal, and Andre, Michael have um, shared on the mailing list the, the draft of the of proposal um, with, with the template to be submitted with the NTIA. And my understanding is the latest draft that's been shared is the one that's been posted by Michael with red lines to um, Andre's draft. Is my understanding correct? Um, any, anyone would like to add anything? No? Okay, then um, I'd like to move to the confirmation of the last action, which is to amount together proposals in each RIA regions and post on NRL website. I believe this is done, and I've shared this uh, link with the global um, uh, NRO IANA mailing list, as well as I've actually also forwarded this to the list for the APNIC region as well. So I do encourage others to uh, share in within your respective um, regions list as well. So I think we're done with this actions review, so let's move on to discussions about the draft proposal. So it would be helpful if um, first um, Andre and Michael uh, could share the essence of what you thought was important to put on this um, this proposal? Uh, obviously, the I think the part that most people are interested in is the part about the section three about the proposal um, on the changes. 
but I think it's equally important um, to understand what are the things that you actually took care to describe about the existing mechanisms. So um, may I first uh, start with Andre, if you're ready to explain the essence of um, what you tried to describe on this um, proposal. Sure. Well, thank you, Zumi. Um, yeah. Um, let me just uh, open a document in my window so it's easier for me. Um, I think, uh, well, one comment, and that is just editorial, I think we need to consider that uh, this draft doesn't follow uh, that requirement, but while working at the IETF on the on the similar proposal, we got a request from the ICG that um, answers are better provided section by section. I think that clarifies the document as well, but I think for our discussion, it doesn't matter too much at the moment. Um, so let me just jump and see um, how we compile this proposal. I think it was based on the high level principles that RIPE community discussed um, in autumn and also on the discussion we had at the RIPE meeting. So we took some of the major points, and I think the major, major point is that the system is working well, so no significant changes are necessary. We just need to see what um, what are the gaps that are absence of NTIA contract with ICANN um, for provision of the IANA functions uh, leaves and fill those those gaps. So if you look at the first section, which is description of community's use of IANA, that is just stating the facts. So I, I wouldn't stop here. Um, existing pre-transition arrangements, I think it's also a fair description of um, the documents we have. And also um, mentioned that there is no real uh, contractual agreements between the RIR and the and ICANN on provision of IANA functions. I think the meat of the proposal in the oversight and accountability and uh, specifically in section three, proposed post-transition oversight and accountability arrangements. Um, I think the proposal here, uh, again, we try to uh, take uh, the most um, simple and straightforward approach, uh, seeing IANA services um, separate completely from the policy development process, which is, I think, well established and working well. So here we're looking at just mechanical function of operating the registry on the request of the areas um, and at the pleasure of the areas in a way. Um, and then this sense um, a contract with um, stated service level agreement seems uh, the right instrument, which is what's specified basically in this section. I think transition implication, it uh, follows from the uh, suggested changes in section three. Um, I won't stop uh, long there. And finally, section five, NTA requirements, basically we try to justify that the uh, changes and the process that followed it meets the requirements for NTA uh, that NTA stipulated at the beginning of the whole process. Now, if you look at the final section, community process, I think um, not everything is filled uh, filled in. For instance, we uh, filled um, the section for RIPE, obviously, and um, if we are happy with this template, we can continue and fill the sections for other. Um, communities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andre, for a um, comprehensive um, explanation and also uh, working and sharing on this draft. So, uh, Michael, is there anything that you would like to add uh, to Andre's um, explanation? Yes. Um, uh Um, Michael, I wasn't sure if you mentioned you're happy with um, with Andre's explanation. There's nothing to add, or are you speaking and we're just simply not hearing you? Not hearing Michael at all. Michael, can you shake your microphone? Um, absolutely, and thank you. Um, so, in dealing with uh, with this draft, I know. Andre
Michael. Can you take a look at your microphone because we cannot hear you. Hello. Can you all hear me now? Yes. Okay. My apologies. Yes. My apologies. Um, I do. Uh, I uh, did work well with um, Andre on this. So I wanted to just say that uh, you know, there's everything he said. I agree with. I think that uh, uh, what we have put together is trying to kind of coordinate all the different concerns from the different RIRs, and this was a good draft to kind of start out with and and welcome the comments from everybody else. Just a couple of points to add. Um, you know, we, we tried to incorporate some of the pieces from Aaron's draft proposal, uh, which was in response to our uh, community survey. And um, the SLA side of things, you know, we, we envisioned it going to be into a draft agreement that will be between um, an operator, which at this, this point we seem to will be with ICANN, and then also with the five RIRs coordinating through the NRO. Um, I think that pretty much Andre has gone over everything that we would like to see in this, and hopefully this is a good starting point for all of us to have a good discussion, and then we're ready to go ahead and edit it as needed. So thank you. Thank hey, Michael. So it's really good to know that you you, you think Andre's draft makes a lot of sense and it's a, it's a good starting point. I also got the same impression personally. And um, so it would be great if uh, Craig could um, share, you did um, give us a brief update about the differences in proposals and how we um, how we've tried to overcome the differences. But I think it would still be useful to have a recap of um, the current situation and, and uh, current situation in terms of what you plan to propose as a compromise plan. And then afterwards, I'd like to move on to hear inputs from the uh, Chris members about the proposed uh, plan. Thanks, Izumi. Can everyone hear me? Hello. Yes. Can you... Ah, great. Yes, we can hear you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thanks, Izumi. Um, look, the way I see it is that the, the document that's been submitted by uh, Michael and Andre um, it's a really good starting point, and I see that most of our edits, as you mentioned, is going to occur on um, on point three. And I'm hoping that the document that I circulated will help um, help us sort of formulate a view in relation to point three and put some more flesh uh, onto point three with some more details. So what I have circulated is really uh, what I spoke to in conversation uh, on the first teleconference, which is really um, outlining the three proposals that's been um, put forward by uh, APNIC, RIPE, and LACNIC to the communities, um, and explore the subtle differences between them, but more importantly, looking at the commonality. So the, commonal the commonality of the three RIRs um, and consistent with Aaron's proposal is that there is going to be SLA. And, and so that concept is already mentioned in the current submission uh, circulated um, by Andre and, and by Michael. So that's a really good point. So this, the, the differences really um, surrounds the AOC concept. Um, but as I mentioned, I think uh, all of us are agreeable to incorporating whatever that we wanted to see in the AOC um, into the SLA. So there's no issue there. So the third uh, difference is in relation to the monk um, and how that's to be accommodated. And I think what we see as a way forward is to get the NROEC to indicate that they will uh, create or they will empanel a subcommittee um, under a different guise, but, but essentially comprising of community members, not unlike the CRISP really, um, to advise it on an annual basis about, about the performance uh, of IANA functions operator um, as to whether or not the IANA functions operator has performed its job properly according to the contract on a yearly basis. So that would then deal with the monk issue as well. So that's really where we are at. Thank you very much, Craig. 
So um, I'd like to move on to um, hear the community, uh, the, the Chris members' input on whether this uh, proposed um, uh, plan uh, does make sense from, um, from the perspective of your region. And I think it would be quite helpful if you could first share uh, what the uh, the status of your proposal within your region is, what difference this uh, makes, and then whether, um, and if you think you agree, then in what way you think it's, uh, it's good, or, um, and then if you have any questions about the proposed uh, changes or concerns, um, then please um, uh, feel free to share it. So I'd like to start from the Afrinic region. Anybody from Afrinic willing to share? Uh, this is Alan Barrett. I can say something. Um, I'm, I'm sure Ernest will be able to add details if I forget any. Um, we do not have a uh, formal proposal in the Afrinic region, so there's, there's not, no text that we need to merge. Um, we have had a consultation with the community at, most recently at the uh, AFRINIC face-to-face meeting in Mauritius about two weeks ago. Um, and I believe that all the, the issues that the community identified as important do seem to be incorporated in this draft. Um, let me read from my notes. Um, the Afrina community felt that the bottom-up process should be, that is currently used by the RIR should be maintained. Um, the status should be better documented, and I think this, this draft does help there, although I'm, more documentation can be added. Um, the Afrina community wanted the use of languages other than English to be made easier, and so I, I think we, there's a need for us to translate any of our documents into several languages. Um, and the Afrinic region thought that there was no need for large changes, um, but that small changes such as adding SLAs or uh, revising any uh, MOUs would be uh, useful. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you, Alan. So, um, do you think um, the Afrinic community would be quite comfortable with this um, idea of, um, I can't remember how exactly it's, um, it's phrased, on um, this um, something, this idea to replace this monk? Um, so, I think we have this idea of having the NRO community um, selecting members to uh, do the um, SLA uh, check. Do you think that will be um, like your community would be quite comfortable with this idea? I, yes, I would expect so. Um, I did not hear anything from the African community supporting the idea of um, monk, although it was mentioned during our consultation process. I think any uh, oversight from the NRO um, putting together some kind of committee would be acceptable to the Afrinic community. Thank you, Alan. So it's great to know that um, Afrinic community is likely to feel comfortable. So um, anybody from, well, I think it's Michael, Michael you're the only one from the Aryan region. Um, would you like to um, share your observations? Well, you already did earlier, but um, I think it would be useful to understand the key points of interest for the Aryan community. Okay, can everybody hear me now? All right. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to necessarily take too much time because I've already had time to speak on the draft. Um, I do know that, that the idea of stability and, and keeping that, um, you know, the system that's working in place is something of concern. Um, but having the SLA, I think that having that in the actual contract, or at least if it is a separate document directly
Um, since we're not hearing Michael, um, let's um, move to another speaker and then come back to Michael when he can hopefully um, um, let us hear him. So uh, I think Nurani had her hand up. So Nurani, would you like to speak? Thank you, Sumi. Uh, and I'll keep it brief because I think Andre uh, did a very good job in, in representing um, the, the rock community's um, um, position. And I also think it's, it's represented in this document. And I think from my side, we are comfortable with the changes made by uh, Michael. Uh, and then I just have a point of, of clarification again also about Craig's uh, excellent um, overview, the summary of the RIR proposal, but I'm happy to take that later or, or now. In the, um, the proposed agreement between the RIRs and uh, the INR. Um, so, Narani, perhaps you can share those observations uh, when um, we hear from the right community, so you can add your observations about uh, Craig's um, um, draft and um, Andre and Michael's draft. Would, would that be okay? Definitely, thank you. Okay, so uh, back to you, Michael. We um, Unfortunately, we were not able to hear you earlier. So do you mind to uh, try again and see if we can hear you speak? Yes, is this, uh, are you able to hear me now? Okay, so um, I don't want to take too much time because I've uh, already spoken earlier, but just wanted to highlight a couple of the items. Um, you know, I know that stability is one of the issues that, that we feel is of concern, so we want to make sure that that is all in there, and I think that is embodied here in the draft. Um, with regard to the SLA, um, you know, we are very much in line, I think, with all, with everybody else here. And what we envision is seeing any kind of service level obligations to be in the proposed agreement and as an operator, um, specifically in that agreement, or if it is in a separate document to make sure that it is directly referenced there. And I think that will meet um, our concerns. With regard to the uh, you know, monk side that Craig had, had raised, and I know that we had discussed this in Mauritius among the staff members. Um, you know, based on this proposal and from what uh, I understand from my community, that uh, maybe on the staff by the to fulfill the type of concerns that the monk proposal um, was raising, I think that is, that is acceptable to us too. So, um, with that, I think that everything else is uh, kind of self-explanatory in the draft, and uh, I thank you for the time. Great, thanks, Michael. So, uh, well, maybe we'll keep uh, APNIC version at the very end, and then uh, let's move to LACNIC. Anybody from LACNIC are willing to share your observation? Yes, um, Esteban Lescano is speaking. Uh, hello, everybody. Well, for us, this, this document uh, posted by Michael is, is a, a good point to to begin with the, the, the discussion. Uh, for us, we agree with the SLA agreement and the, um, uh, the, 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 the mode, the affirmation of commitments, but we also think that the this this monk this this uh, this this body this this oversight council uh, is a, a, a good idea for, for the for the Ayana transition. Uh, we we want to 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 include the, 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 the monk in the in, in, a, in the proposal, but but we think that that uh, it has to be in a consensus uh, basis. Thank you, Esteban. So you feel that um, although we don't have the proposal in the form of monk, this um, idea of um, review by the NRO community does um, actually meet the intention of the LACNIC community. That's how I understood it. So thank you. So um, you know, perhaps Nurani from RIPE? Yes, 
Would you be able to share your observation? Or anybody else from RIPE is welcome, but I'll, I'd like to first start with Nurani because she had her hand up. Uh, thank you. My, my, um, my comment was, uh, or my question really was, was uh, in regards to uh, the summary that Craig uh, put together of the RIR proposals. Um, and I was just wondering about uh, the text that describes, um, in relation to this multi-stakeholder oversight uh, numbers council. Um, and well, there are two questions. Um, it says, as a way of addressing the LACNIC uh, community's concerns, the following has been suggested. Um, and to me, it's not entirely clear where that suggestion comes from. Uh, so that's my first question. And then the second point is the way it describes the NRO as an umbrella body through which all the RIRs will enter into a proposed contract with the IANA functions operator. And, uh, and I don't think uh, everyone necessarily subscribes to that view. So uh, if I could ask for a clarification on those two points. Thank you. Sure, Narani. So on the first question as to who that where the suggestion came from, um, the suggestion really was um, the RIR staff speaking together to, to find a resolution as to the um, how to address the monk issue. So my understanding is that the right community has some concerns about the use of the term multi-stakeholder. Um, that is what I have been told by RIPE staff. Um, and in, but I think from AP Nick's perspective and from Aaron's perspective, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm speaking on behalf of Michael here, but please speak up. Um, I mean, the, the issue that we see with Monk is that it is uh, slightly complicated uh, to deal with um, assessing the performance of simply a transaction. So, so um, the suggestion came from us staff discussing together. Does that answer your first question, Narani? Uh, yes, thank you. In relation to the second question on the NRO, um, look, the NRO was created, created specifically to group the RIRs together. So I think at the NRO EC meeting, we discussed that again. Um, NRO is not a legal entity. It is simply an a unincorporated body that um, represents all the five RIRs acting together. So uh, that is mentioned in passing, but what I imagine is that at the ultimate contract will be signed by all the five RIRs, but bracket acting collectively through the NRO. So the NRO has in the past, um, and as part of its mission that's subscribed to by all the RIR, as the um, kind of umbrella, if you like, the, the coordinating body that um, through which all the RIRs will act together. Um, so NRO itself is not a legal entity. It cannot enter into that agreement. It will be signed by the RIRs, but the RIRs will do so collectively as a, as a group. And the grouping is the NRO. Does that answer your second question? Okay, thank you. Yes, I think that clarifies things and that, I guess, what was my question given that the NRO is not a legal entity. I guess we can discuss how, how whether um, I think from, um, some is that the, all the RIRs will enter, enter separately into, well, the same contract, but separately with the IANA functions operator. But the details of that maybe is possibly a bit premature to discuss now. So thanks a lot. I think that clarified things. Sure, that's all right. But if my, I can just maybe answer that. The idea is not a separate contract. It will be a, one contract that has the five RIRs names on it. It will be all signed together. Um, but the RIRs will say that we are entering into this collectively through the NRO. That's the proposal. But we can talk about that later. But I don't think anyone expects there to be five separate documents. So thanks to Rani for the question and for uh, Craig for clarifying. And uh, the last is the APNIC region and it's a little bit difficult because I'm 
I don't know whether it's appropriate for me to put the head of the APNIC region or better for Craig to um, explain. Um, so perhaps, um, Craig, can you explain that uh, um, how this proposal would help specifically from the perspective of the APNIC region? Point of view? Sure, thanks. Um, APNIC released this proposal, which is the affirmation of commitment and the service level agreement. So the AOC and the SLA um, propose, uh, the uh, proposal was given to our community at the APNIC 38 meeting in Brisbane uh, a few months ago. Um, there, were, there, was of, there were a lot of discussions around this, this proposal. Um, in general, I, I see our community is fairly happy with that concept. Um, whether or not the AOC and SLA exist as two separate agreements or, or sit together as one, I sense that our community is more uh, interested in the substance of it rather than the form of it. Uh, uh, I think we need to ask someone to... And the, another script team, uh, where that is on? The script team, where that is on? Mike. Bob, Bob needs to mute your mic. Okay, sorry. Um, so I think our community is really more interested in the substance of the arrangements between the RIRs and the INA con uh, functions operator rather than the form of it. Um, I don't see any problems with that. Um, and in relation to the monk concept that's come up sort of subsequent to our uh, meeting and uh, discussions, um, but um, really I can't envisage that we would have a, that, that the community will have a problem with that. So putting on the hat of the APNIC uh, region's representative, I agree with uh, Craig's observation about the, um, the AOC. It doesn't really matter whether it's you know, stated as a separate document as AOC, or it's incorporated as a part of a single document in, inside the SLA. I think it's just like just a you know a matter of um, difference in forms. And I do actually have a question about um, uh, about this um, NRL community, um, meaning the um, the supervision of the SLA. So um. I'm kind of curious how this um, IETF community conducts and maintains the, um, the SLA uh, review, if there is such a mechanism. And I'm wondering if Andre of, or anybody who, who is familiar um, can share and then compare if there's a difference, a notable difference with this uh, suggested model. And uh, the second question I have is, um, I'm not really sure how this works. So do we actually have like a, a predefined criteria about the um, reviewing the service level and then this our community representative will um, will like review whether this um, um, the IANA meets with this SLA or is this like a part of the responsibility of this um of this um, NRL representatives to do the work on. I don't know if we, I, I'm, we don't necessarily need to document the details in the proposal, but um, I think uh, it does help to um, understand a little bit more on how it works um, to feel comfortable. Yeah, Izumi, I think, look, this is really just our thoughts and, and our, our kind of, when I say our, the, the RIR staff, sort of talking together and, and seeing whether we can see a way through. Um, what we contemplate, and, and I'm happy to be corrected by my colleagues, what we contemplate is that um, the NROEC will simply empanel, um, you know, CRISP number two, if you like, um, in, in, a, in a very similar fashion um, on a yearly basis. And this group of people, simple, single um, task, is to review the performance um, based on you know the, the number of transactions that's um, carried out in the past 12 months, um, and to see whether it had the I'll use I can. It's a lot easier for me to say than I am a functions operator. Just substitute the two together. Um, but the idea would be for 
the group to assess how well ICANN has performed its job in the last 12 months. Um, it will then, um, and whether it has met the service level as set out in the service level agreement. Um, it will then provide, uh, prepare a report and submit that report to the NROEC for its consideration. And I, I, I suppose the NROEC will have to take notice of the report and the recommendations made by this group. But ultimately, it, the NROEC uh, will make the decision about compliance, but it is a kind of a reporting mechanism that involves the broader community. Does that answer your question, Izumi? Um, yes, I, I uh, very clearly I understand the status and how uh, how much uh, discussions have gone so far at this stage, and I, I think I understand the essence and intentions. So thank you, Craig. So um, I don't know if um, anybody is familiar with this um, SLA review, if it existed at the IETF and able to share. Thank you, Zumi. Oh, I, can, I can shed some light, uh, but not in great detail. Um, the IETF has a special administrative structure uh, called IASA. This is a um, IETF uh, administrative support activity or something like this. And within this uh, body, which also looks at the uh, financial aspects of the IETF, you know that IETF is not uh, an incorporated entity, right? That's a virtual organization. ISOC is an organization home for that. But to carve out the IETF part from the um, ISOC financial um, arrangements, uh, this uh, IASA activity was created. Within this activity, there is a body, um, a committee, which is uh, called uh, IOC, uh, which is, I think, uh, IETF Administrative Oversight Committee, which is actually negotiating service level agreements with uh, IAN operate on behalf of the IETF. So that's in a nutshell how it's organized in, in the IETF, and that has been since, I think, 2000 or something like that. Thank you very much, Andre. I, um, I got the impression that the situation of the IETF is a little bit uh, different from the RIR model. So um, I was thinking maybe it's like a reference based on the existing experience. But um, um, yes, I think it's better to think as a, something separately as the numbers community. Um, you know, just my observation. So I think uh, the general feel of the uh, of the team is that we're, all of the regions are quite comfortable with the suggested changes um, as an idea. So the next steps would be to um, maybe review the the current um, latest draft that's being shared by Michael, uh, whether this uh, document uh, properly explains the suggested changes and. Um, as well as it does um, explain the existing mechanisms in the way that we feel comfortable, especially making sure that um, we, we are able to explain that we are very uh, transparent and um, accountable um, our body, our community, to our, um, uh, our mem the members of the communities. And um, yeah, I don't know what, what other elements that people think is important. So, um, I think it's it's good for each individual members to take a look, but it might again be helpful if we can have some some volunteers um, who take initiatives to um, see from their perspective whether this um, the latest document, the draft document, um, currently uh, shared by Michael, um, does uh, reflect the the idea that has been shared by Craig. Do we have any volunteers um, from the team? Zumi, I'm not volunteering yet, but I think, uh, it might come back to the um, the four of us who have volunteered in a drafting group, and perhaps we can arrange between ourselves. Um, and it seems to me perhaps it's best um, done, and I'm not volunteering anyone, but you know Andre and uh, Michael who kind of have 
uh, custody of these documents, so to speak. And of course, the rest, um, the other two of us are happy to help. Does that make sense? Um, thank you, Craig. That makes sense to me personally, but um, I just wonder if um, the others who have um, volunteered for um, after the last meeting feel comfortable with this idea, uh, or like others in the team are happy with this uh, arrangement. Yes, I, I, I agree. I agree with the with the proposal. Uh, this is Andre. Uh, I, I agree, and I'm happy to volunteer. Um, uh, slightly different issues I wanted to bring up is more tied to methods of working. I think what Michael suggested um, some time ago is that uh, having editorial control, so he could incorporate this. So having one panel is a good thing, right? So we have one document working from one document. I would also recommend that if we open an issue or discussing a particular thing, we open a different thread, but that of course depends if we plan to work on the crisp, crisp mailing list. But I think even if we work on IANA transfer and discussing uh, different issues, it's better to open a separate thread, email thread, for each issue that we identify. Then we can contain the discussion and see what's the starting or the end point of this discussion. Just a remark. Thank you, Andre, for raising this. I think all the suggestions uh, make a lot of sense. And um, just to understand what um, what's meant by one pen is like, um, if I um, please um, confirm if I understood correctly. So have one person doing the editing, and then make sure that we have the consistency. Is that the correct interpretation? Yeah, that was I was suggesting. I, I, theoretically, we can put this document on uh, Google Drive, right, and enable everyone to edit. But I think that might not be uh, super productive. Um, I would be much comfortable if, for instance, Michael holds the pen and, um, and incorporates the changes, the suggested changes that are being discussed on the mailing list. I think that makes a lot of sense um, to me personally, and um, I wonder if Michael would be um, happy and comfortable um, to uh, work on this. Great, Michael. Um, so um, please help us, and then um, so if any members of the team uh, give feedback, then uh, Michael will help us um, incorporate that in the uh, in the editing. Thank you very much, Michael, for uh, volunteering for this. So, it, it, it to me, uh, Esteban is speaking. Uh, maybe we can, uh, uh, within the, the 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 volunteers for for writing the the docs, we we can share a Google Doc or or, or similar, uh, but uh, just uh, within the, the the team, and then publish to the list the the the, the document with the uh, the the consensus uh, between. All, all us as, as volunteers. Uh, it's, it's just a, a suggestion. Well, thank you very much, Esteban. I think, sure, I think you, um, all the volunteers, it's free for you to uh, use whatever tool that you feel comfortable among yourselves, and um, I, I don't see any issues with that uh, suggestion. And thank you, Alan, for uh, commenting that you do support a single document editor who incorporate suggestions from others. Thanks. Okay, I think we're going uh, quite uh, smooth with our agenda, and we have already started. Um, well, thank you, Nirani, for expression support for this as well. So um, I think we have already started uh, discussions on how we move things, and I think we're done with this uh, agenda number four, drafting tools. So the idea is to have a single pen um, and volunteered by Michael for work on editing. So uh, let's move on to the last part of the agenda, which is um, I'll confirm about the next steps and schedule. Can you, um, oh, I think I have to slow this down a little bit myself. Okay. Um, so I think we agreed at the last meeting to um, target 18th next um, Thursday to um, publish our draft. So um, to do that, we probably want, well, well, I think we want to fix the draft uh, by the 17th 
for us to feel comfortable that um, we we can publish this. So maybe we will um, make comments open for people in the team to uh, give feedback to the current draft so that Michael can work on it until the um, 17th, uh, uh, until the 16th. We, we close it at that. And then um, have Michael to uh, work um, work on a regular basis as, um, as he receives comments that um, share the latest uh, draft on the, uh, on the 17th. Does that make sense to um, everybody, or anybody have a better suggestion? It seems nobody is making comments, so let's um, work with this uh, target. And then, great, so works well from Michael's perspective, great. So, um, so I just want to I'll move to the next um, point, which is I put this as communications with respective RIR regions. But um, well, thank you, Andres and Andre, for support for this idea uh, for the timeline as well. So, communications with um, respective RIR regions. But of course, we have to engage with the global uh, NRO mailing list as well. And uh, I think this kind of relates to the point that we have um, dis discussed about whether to open the archives of the CRISP um, uh, team's mailing list, at least just for reading only. So um, let me first summarize the current status of discussion. So um, the question is, um, I think we have all agreed that this CRISP team's uh, mailing list it's um, the subscript on the posting. It's only allowed for our uh, Chris team members only. So um, members of the community would not be able to post messages to our uh, Chris team's um, working mailing list. The question is whether we just make this archives available for read only, or whether we totally just uh, keep it closed uh, among the Chris uh, members. And uh, some people feel that it's okay to open the archives as long as it's read only. And then others feel that um, not so comfortable with um, uh, sharing it because um, they feel that it affects the, um, it might, okay. Uh, Andre. Yeah, well, I'm jumping in because you asked me a question and I didn't answer it. What kind of sort of confusion I envisage? I I have uh, I don't have an objection actually against opening these archives um, uh, to public, um, and I'm not feeling uncomfortable. Uh, the thing is, um, I'm slightly concerned that that can cause extra confusion and that might reduce the urge for us ourselves to use IANA transfer as the main communication medium because well it's 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 still open, right? So the confusion. For instance, if someone would look at the archives and start misinterpreting things and bring them up in the IANA transfer, someone from the community, for instance. Um, so I, lo I looked at the CRISP uh, NRO.net mailing list as really a drafting instrument just to get quickly iterations and release the issues um, to, to the general community and also separate possible disagreements between CRISP team members uh, from the general public discussion. But as I said, I feel comfortable if, if the discussions on CRISP mailing list are open in public archives, uh, just uh, purely from the point of efficiency and taking into account very aggressive timeline. Thank you, Andre, for um, clarifying. So you are okay with the uh, uh, read-only archives, but do feel that there may be a possibility that uh, pe some people read um, the archives of the mailing list and then start commenting on the um, their global mailing list and um, maybe that which require us to provide a, um, additional uh, work on handling the uh, the questions um, from the community, which may be not like a, um, directly relevant to the proposal. So that's how I understood your point. Um, I don't know if Nurani has anything to add or basically agree with um, Andre's um, uh, position. 
So me, sorry, I, I raised my hand in the in the queue. Sorry, all oh, her man, please. Thank you. Um, I I think what we need to avoid is uh, precisely confusion on uh, on having two different mailing lists. Um, it was never conceived the existence of uh, internal <coughs> sorry Chris uh, mailing list. I think um, for the sake of transparency, we need to be very careful to have the discussion in the global mailing list. In fact, the CRIS team must encourage and promote that discussion. And the, the, the mere use of the CRIS team mailing list should be for internal coordination that is not relevant for the uh, core discussions that need to be focused in the proposal per se. So the, the, I think the, the, we must be clear and where the discussions and what the discussions uh, uh, should be, uh, and avoid at all costs any discussions, uh, sorry, any confusions or perceptions that the Christine is, is working behind the behind walls. Um, and of course, the, I think uh, the, the idea of having the archives open for read only uh, to to uh, to everybody is is. is should, should, should be uh, adopted, uh, at least for me. Uh, but the, the importance of having most of the discussions in the global mailing list is, is important for the sake of transparency of the process. Thank you, Herman. Um, I, I very much agree that uh, we have to make sure that most of the, our discussion should uh, take place on the global uh, NLO IANA mailing. And I see several uh, hands being put up. So I first see um, Alan, and then afterwards, uh, let's go to Nurani. So first, Alan. OK. I thank you. Um, I'd like to support what Herman said about transparency. I think it's important that any substantive discussions take place either in these conference calls or on the public mailing list. And I think the private mailing list should be restricted to coordination, things like uh, setting the date of the meeting or who's volunteered for what task. And if we restrict ourselves to that, then I think there should be no problem with transparency. Um, however, I do think we should open the archives. Um, I've heard a concern that opening the archives of the private list might lead to confusion in the public list. And I'd like to suggest a compromise that we uh, open the archives of the, the private list um, only after the end of the, the working time. So on the 15th of January or thereabouts when we submit our final proposal, that we agree that at that time we will open the archives so that anybody can check into the private list and see that um, there's been no funny business going on. Thank you, Alan, for your, your suggestion. So if I understood it correctly, let's open the archives once we have the draft ready, um, the first draft ready. That's how I understood um, your proposal. So uh, let's go to our uh, Nirani. Um, thank you, Zemi. Um, I'll try to keep my comments short. Um, two points. Uh, I, I think that Alan offered a very elegant compromise, uh, and I'll be comfortable with that. I just want to make one point about transparency, that I think that I think transparency is paramount. So if this becomes a discussion about transparency, um, then I'd much rather go with being making them publicly available. But I just my point is that I don't actually think this is a matter of transparency. Uh, like I, as I was trying to to say in my May, I think it is quite normal that any work, any policy work done, or any of the work of this nature done, um, is made text is drafted in smaller groups. Uh, it becomes a matter of transparency. Uh, only when you do not uh, seek feedback on that every step along the way. If we go off and um, produce uh, a fully completed text that we then present to the community, 
for me, that is when it becomes a matter of transparency. If we work together to come up with something that we can present to the community, seek feedback on, move on to the next step, seek feedback on the next step, etc., then uh, to me, it's actually a matter of working methods rather than transparency. Uh, but like I said, I think Alan's uh, compromise is very elegant. And then finally, it is. I had a question of um, the point of order. To me, it's not um, entirely clear, and maybe Izumi or, or Herman, for that matter, can clarify. Since Herman is speaking on behalf of the NROEC, uh, could I seek clarification of what the role of the NRO? Uh, EC uh, is in this particular group. Thank you. Hi, Nurani. This, uh, if I can uh, respond, this to me. Um, Go ahead, Henry. Thank you, Sumi. Um, is the other role here is that mere coordinator um, of the of the of the work. Uh, I'm here just a facilitator, uh, but at the same time, I. I have also um, have, co have contacts with the uh, NRO Ex Executive Council, and I have uh, the, the concept of what they have uh, on how the process should be. So in, 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 in this particular case, I'm uh, uh, passing the concerns of the process of what uh, should be, and the, and the aspect of transparency, for example, that must be paramount is one of those. So in, in some cases, I'm just um, expressing NROEC views of this process, and um, but uh, more, but I think the, the core aspect of my role here is to facilitate. And I'd, I would like uh, also to offer, based on my um, relationship with the NROEC, to try to avoid uh, uh, take the wrong path. Um, and uh, and that will be my intention of the last advice, um, and don't make the things uh, over complicated, and remind the the team about the transparency of the process is important. But um, I hope that uh, that answered your question, Ryan. Um, Mr. May I just also add that my, my interpretation is that um, I don't think NROEC has any authority over the work of Chris team or such, but I think it's just like um, Herman happens to have a channel as uh, one of the community members um, observing the situation on discussions, and I, I, that's how I take uh, the input from uh, NROEC. If I don't, um, unless Herman has anything else to add. And um, okay, thank you. People are mm. agreeing. Yeah. No, no. Uh, I think the, the process is yours, uh, but I think it's important to remind that if it, it was the NROEC who drafted the chapter, um, and um, and as part of the draft of the chapter, I think uh, they tried to reflect the concerns of the, or the requirements of the request for proposal from the for the NTIA and how the work should be should be performed, and um, any and, and and I think that um, the the Chris team is is uh, is uh, is free to run the developments according to their best criteria. Uh, I think the only constraint there is that any change in the in the current chapter need, would need to go through the NROEC, but I think that would be the only constraint. But anything else, I think, is uh, is according to the best uh, judgment and and wise of this group how to proceed. Thank you, Herman. So I think um, uh, as uh, Andre has um, um, commented, we act within the charter, and uh, of course we're open to hear inputs from NROEC if they feel they, they have any comments. But it, we'll take that as a reference. And um, thank you, Nurani, for explaining your, explaining your understanding. I, I see uh, your aspect of the argument um, as well. And, uh, but I observe that both yourself and Andre are quite comfortable to accept uh, Alan's uh, suggestion, compromise suggestion. Thank you very much, Alan, for um, coming up with this uh, very elegant compromise suggestion. 
So uh, let's uh, work with this uh, uh, CRISPR team um, um, group working ma mailing list um, closed until we do, um, publish our first draft, and then we make sure that uh, we we um, share all the core information uh, with the global and our mailing list. Even before this, um, uh, um, we, we open the public archives of the read-only um, Christine mailing. So it's, it's very important that we, we share the outcome of our discussions and uh, keep the community informed on the global and our own mailing. So in addition to the, the minutes, um, I think, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, let's share the, uh, the, the timeline, the schedule, and um, um, I'm happy to add any overview of the outcome of the discussions today, for example. And of course, Christine members are welcome to give your inputs or share information on, on the global and our, our mailing list. So um, I hope that sums up. And um, let me lastly confirm before I adjourn if anybody else have anything to add, anything that um, you want to comment? I see Nurani that, um, that um, is happy with Herman's uh, clarification. So I don't um, hear and I don't see any hands up or further comments. So um, I'd like to adjourn the meeting um, and thank you very much, oh, Andre. Please. Oh, yeah, just one comment, because the thing is, we start communicating with our community and already got some community feedback. People ask not to send documents in proprietary format. I think they mean Microsoft Word. So if you can, can either share this via online publication or send the PDFs, at, at least that would be appreciated. I think we should respect those, those requirements. Um, I I did I, I did catch that you you feel we should share something with the community, but I didn't exactly catch what exactly you think we should share. Can you all repeat? Oh, I apologize. We shared the documents with the community, which were in Microsoft document format, and some people were unhappy, and I can understand why. Um, my preference would be to um, share these documents if they are published online as online publication. Um, maybe on the NRO side, or um, at least if you want to send the current version of the document to the community, use PDF as the format. Well, I made the same mistake, so it's 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 my fault as well. <laughs> Understood. Um, ter that totally makes sense. And so let's just uh, try to share either as a, as a form of a web page or as a PDF. I, I think that suggestion totally makes sense. So let's keep a note about that. Thank you, uh, Andre. So, um, anybody else have any other comments um, they want to make um, uh, lastly? Nope. So, thank you very much for um, joining the meeting. And I think we made uh, quite a good progress. It has been constructive. And uh, let's um, continue discussions online. Thanks, all. It's for me. Oh? Very quickly, sorry. Sure. Um, next meeting, just to be clear, uh, would be, sorry, uh, next Monday on the 15th, am I right? Thank you so much for reminding me. This is very important, yes. yes. So on the, uh, on the 15th, next Monday, let's meet again and then um, so it's, uh, we, we all agreed about the time. Nobody has uh, expressed concern about UTC on 13 o'clock. So um, let's, uh, oh, well, actually, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. How, how do others feel about this? Um, it seems that we, we made quite good progress. So I personally don't feel the strong need to meet um, again uh, face to face unless others feel that we should do this. So if I don't hear any concerns that um, about not meeting on the 15th, then um, well, since we will have the the, um, 
the um, the draft uh, to be put together by Michael on the 17th. Would it make sense, more sense, to meet on the 17th? I see no comments. So uh, my suggestion is to have the next meeting on the 17th, the same time, um, 13 UTC, just before we publish the uh, draft to the community. So um, thank you all very much for participating. And um, so let's um, keep discussions online. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Zumi. Okay, thank you.